Spurge here, and in this video, we're gonna break down the new Scorpion AT960 helmet. So, this is the new version of the old outgoing Scorpion AT950, a helmet that I have owned, that I have loved, that I have used, but no one has loved it more or used it harder than Spencer Robert. Spencer Robert is our West Coast video producer. If you've ever seen an episode of CTXP, he is the madman behind the videos, um, putting Ari Henning and Zach Quartz through all of their ridiculous paces. Um, and he is a huge fan of the AT950 because it is a helmet that if you're shooting a video, you can easily throw it up in the modular position. You can take the photos or the video you need to take, and then you can put it back down and you can ride. The AT950 has been relatively unchanged since 2016. I have an older version here. I'm gonna pull up at the table in a second. But really, this is a helmet that has been such a bestseller for Scorpion. So many people have liked it because it's affordable. Comes in around just shy of the $300 price point starting. Um, but it's also a helmet that gives you ADV style and functionality. It gives you modular functionality. And you can take the peak off. And with the peak off and the side pods put on, it looks like a street helmet. So there's a lot that you get from this particular lid, even more so now with the redesign that we're gonna talk about because it just looks a little bit sportier with that peak removed. So the whole kit and caboodle on this is this is going to be a helmet for people that are looking to ride on-road, off-road. You want an adventure helmet. You like the idea of having modular functionality and for either a different bike in your garage or when you're using your uh, adventure bike as a sport touring motorcycle, you can remove the peak, put the side pods on, and have a helmet that now pulls a lot of its DNA from the Scorpion R1 Air. Remember, that's their top of the line race helmet. And you can see it even in the aerodynamic redesign of this particular lid, um, a lot of that technology is now working into place. You can probably see it better if I just, you know, break the suspense, I'll pull the, I'll pull the old version up. You can see it kind of side by side here. It is a much more aerodynamic helmet um, with sleeker lines to it that really do harken more towards that sportier R1 Air than the outgoing version. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, uh, let's back up. I'll set this to the side and we'll give you the basic facts and then we'll walk through the differences that you can expect between these two helmets. So again, Pricing for this is gonna start around the $285 mark for the new one. That's only a $10 increase over the older version. Considering the world of inflation that we're living in now, um, the fact that Scorpion was able to make changes here and, and leave the price relatively unchanged, I think is a big win for people and consumers looking at this helmet. Now the, the, the shell is still a polycarb construction, still two shell sizes, extra small to large for the first shell size, second shell size is an extra large up to a 3XL. DOT and ECE rated, uh, did increase in weight a little bit. The new one is now four pounds, two ounces in a medium. That is a four ounce increase over the outgoing version. I think a lot of that comes from some of the extra uh, aerodynamic bits you're gonna see here. Also, this one has a, a built-in comm readiness for the Scorpion EXO comm system. We'll get into that in a minute. But all of that is gonna add a bit to the weight of this helmet. Now. Intermediate oval head shape, a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrower down the side of the head, and this is gonna fit for the majority of the American market. Really great fitting helmet for the majority of riders out there. If you're not sure what we're talking about when we're talking about helmet shape for an interior fit, make sure you check out our how to size and buy a motorcycle helmet guide. We walk you through all the nuances of sizing up a motorcycle helmet in that particular video. So all that out of the way, aerodynamic redesign, again, without beating the dead horse too much, is a completely sportier shell design than the old version, really kind of taking in a lot of the DNA for that redesigned R1 Air, which is now their flagship sport bike helmet. You can see it in the peak, you can see it in the shell construction, and you can see it in the way that the vents have been reimagined on this. Much better ventilation on the new helmet. You've got a redesigned chin vent, you got a redesigned vent up top. It's not quite the same flip snap on the old one, it is a slider design, pushed a little bit further back up to capture the air, even if you're using it with the peak, and then uh, just passive exhaust fence out back. So taking this and pushing it to the side for a second, the other thing you'll note, outside of aerodynamics, outside of weight, outside of the, uh, 
the, um, uh, the, the vent redesign is that the chin has been redesigned as well. So if you're looking over on the left-hand side, actually before I open it, the, the slider for the internal drop-down for the sun visor is now over on the left-hand side. It used to be up top on the previous version. That is no longer there because you now have this red switch up on the top for this one. And if we open this up into its modular design, that red switch allows you to lock this in an open position. So the chin bar is now lockable, which means that if you're using this as a round town, previously we didn't recommend that you use it as a three quarter helmet. The chin bar now locks up officially and Scorpion is saying you can use this in the three quarter position, mainly at lower speeds. Not that people didn't use the old one. I'm looking at you, Spencer, I know you, um, but this is now redesigned that you can lock this in the upright position and get a true three quarter helmet out of this as well as a modular design. So for the majority of people that just wanna pop this open at a stop and be able to talk to people, take a drink, um, you can do it without having to remove the entire helmet. Unlock that, goes right back down as you would expect. The face shield on this has changed a little bit as well. Much less optical distortion on this face shield versus the previous one. And that was uh, you know, a key change that they wanted to address over the outgoing version. So just really kind of noting the, uh, the changes as they affect you. And, and really the, the overall messaging here is other than that, that, that slight weight increase, all the changes that we're seeing really do add to the overall helmet. Now, you might be looking at this, this was a graphic, this is our, our, our sample that we were able to get from Scorpion. It is a production sample. Unfortunately, they didn't have the peaks ready to go. So this is actually the peak off of a gloss black helmet. What I will tell you is that the peaks for the graphics will match the graphic scheme. But we wanted to be able to shoot this video and, and test the helmet. So Scorpion was nice enough to send us out a gloss black peak. Uh, but when you get uh, a helmet, whatever graphic you choose will have that same graphic on the, uh, on the peak. Other note here too, just minor note, but with the redesigned peak on this, better airflow, less lift, and you're now getting that little Scorpion logo up at the top of the peak. Take it, leave it, doesn't matter, you're getting it. Um, you will get side pods in this. I have them over on the side. Same thing with the side pods. These are just the gloss black ones that were currently available, but the, the pods that you will get will match the graphic of the helmet you get. So like we said, you can take the peak off, you can add the pods on, and now you have a helmet that essentially looks like a slightly different version of the Scorpion R1 Air. Very sporty, very street in its style. That being said, let's open the helmet up and take a look at the inside. I'm gonna take this one off the table and we'll just make some notes. No real key changes to the inside of the helmet. Push the button to open the modular design. We'll pull that face shield back and then we'll just start to take a look at the interior. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, it is gonna get an access port for the, uh, the uh, Exocom system. This is made by Uclear. So this is gonna be a Uclear system that can now snap into place, into the helmet itself. It was set a little bit back on the helmet. So if you wanna add a, a non-proprietary comm system, you can still do so. Just note that the only issue you're gonna run into here is that with the drop down for the internal sun visor, and where that proprietary system goes, there's not much mounting room to be able to get that in there. So either you're gonna have to get creative with how you wanna mount your existing comm system, or you're gonna have to bite the bullet and go with the XO comm. But in the world of sticky mounts and, and ways, I, I think there's probably a way that you can get around having to use the, uh, the XO comm system if you don't want to. So taking a look now at the inside on this, you can see this was kind of a, a key feature but the, uh, the, the um, cheek pads are actually all kind of tied in. So as we pull this out, you'll notice that it, it has an integrated kind of neck roll that works with the cheek pads and it holds them all together. And it's something that I, I think kind of is neat considering the fact that this is a, a bit of a budget helmet, but it has more of a premium feel. And you can see I am struggling a little bit with uh, where this sits in over by the comm system. There's a, a little extra piece right there. But it, it, it just adds a, a layer of comfort and sophistication, really high-end cheek pads for what you'd expect for a helmet around the $300 price point. And then that neck roll really does help to cut down on erroneous wind noise um, with just the way that this sits up against your neck. It doesn't allow wind to push up underneath the helmet um, the way it would do without that. So really a high quality little setup for just what we're looking at for 
a helmet that's really not breaking the bank on a price standpoint. Taking the interior out, you get brow mounted, so you don't have to worry about snaps up front, um, which is just a nice little feature. A lot of times when you're looking at a helmet at this price point, you'd end up with just snaps at the front brow. This actually mounts up to the brow, so no extra pressure points to worry about there. And then just two snaps at the back, but under a thick layer of padding. Um, so other than that, very basic interior with design, lots of channel cutouts to allow the airflow to push through. And just looking at a couple of the channels on the inside here, you can see um, does a great job of actually having nice channel cutouts in the EPS from the front to the back to promote airflow. You can see there are speaker cutouts. My main nitpick here is that the speaker cutouts could be deeper. If you're using this with some of the modern speakers uh, that we've seen from other manufacturers, maybe not the proprietary EXO comm system that Scorpion has for this, the XO comm. But if you're using this with some of the new, you know, Cardo or Cena speakers, um, they might be a bit thick to be able to fit in these cutouts and, and you just might feel it a little bit if you're using that. So would have been nice to see the channel cutouts for the speakers get a little bit deeper considering the thickness that we're seeing with some of these modern comm systems that are really focused on, on high-end audio quality. Um, but as far as everything else with the helmet, it retains a lot of what we've all loved about the AT950, which is some key refinements to the overall aerodynamic style, to the, uh, the, the lockable chin bar feature, um, you do get the integrated comm system if that's something you're excited about, and you basically just get, you know, an improved style and an updated style. The old one was getting a bit long in the tooth from uh, from the look standpoint, and this is definitely something that adds a bit of refinement to it. And I like the fact that, like, if you do take the peak off of this, it just looks like a hell of a sport bike helmet. So you can really use this in a in a, in a couple of different ways. You get a modular helmet, an adventure helmet, and a sport bike helmet all in one, which is a, a pretty big bang for the buck when you're looking at a helmet that starts around that $285 price point. So enough of me rambling about this. Uh, you can check out some of the behind the scenes uh, CTXP photos in the articles, and you can see Spencer Robert rocking the old AT950. I'm sure he will be top on the list to grab the new one. And, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there just like him based on the popularity of the outgoing one and, and the changes that Scorpion made to the AT960. If you want to meet, read more reviews from riders out there like yourself that are using this helmet, you can always click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews. And if you're still not sure if this is the right helmet for you and your riding style, you can always reach out to one of our customer service reps that can walk you through all the different helmets available to make sure you find the right one to match up with the riding you like to do as well as your budget. I want to thank you for joining us for this look at the new Scorpion AT960. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.